What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Shiny McForehead, and this is the shiniest head on YouTube. <laughs> Let's try that again. So welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining. And today we're going to be looking at a video giving us a step-by-step -step guide on how to get a five-day Fenrir kill. We're going to go through a kind of like a checklist approach of what you should be looking to do each and every day. Uh, which items you're going to be building, what you can leave, what you don't have to do and all of that and essentially equipping you with all of the information that you need to be able to make your first attempt at a 5 day kill or perhaps even to refine your methods if you've accomplished this already and maybe felt that it was very RNG based. I definitely think there are certain things that you can do that you can kind of like insulate yourself a little bit against bad RNG and we're definitely going to be dis discussing that. So let's jump right in. First up is class choice. And uh, although I think it's possible to probably do this with each class if you have enough experience with the game and if you get good enough RNG, definitely the two classes that you can have the easiest time doing this with is the Seer and the Warden. Uh, I think you'll have the easiest time doing it with the Warden. Me personally, I prefer using the Seer because I have the most experience playing that class and I also believe it to be the best class in the game with a good mix of utility and uh, you know benefits that you get from the class tree. But nonetheless, if you pick the warden obviously optimize your class choices your in your in your talent tree to go for uh, eliminating you know having to repair anything so weapon durability or item durability or whatever you want to call it uh, obviously get the uh, decreased material cost for building and then lastly be sure to pick up the node that allows you to sell back materials for more souls um what this is going to do is it's just going to help you eliminate a lot of the rng that comes with a five day attempt at fenra due to the fact that you have to construct a whole bunch of material with very little time especially you know, if we look at the bridge for instance to get to fenra so uh that's that's what you're going to try to minimize by picking the right talent choices with the warden when we look at the seer what you want to do is you want to be optimizing for uh, more durable weapons and you want to be picking up tempered so that you can travel more freely in the areas where temperature might become a problem and then lastly you want to optimize your dps so you want to get something like uh, you want to get hasty impulse so you deal you know you attack faster and then you also want to get the in increased thunder damage because we are going to be going for thunder weapons which are just broken as hell in this game at the moment right now then next during your five days while you're out and about the ruins that you should be looking for that you should be trying to carry on your class when you go into your attack on Fenrir is obviously Seder Weaver pumped up uh, soul powered or nothing to hide um, any combination of those ruins and especially if you can get a full five stack of a combination of all of them is going to make your fight on Fenrir a lot easier because you're just going to be pushing out so much more damage so definitely keep an eye out while you're browsing camps while you're taking down camps if you see any of those runes prioritize picking them up over other ones and basically either sell other ones or destroy them in favor of these next and lastly before we start breaking down each day individually on the screen right now is a snapshot of all of the materials that you're going to need from day one all the way up until day five so these are all the items that you're going to have to be building uh, and as well these are some of the constructions that you have to gonna you know do like for instance building the bridge to Fenra. so i'm going to leave this up on the screen for a little bit you can obviously come back to this at a time now this is quite important and i'll be referring it to it later when we're discussing day by day but the point is anything else that you're picking up above uh, above these materials you can sell and that's just going to give you more souls because there's also quite a heavy soul requirement that you need when you actually want to get up to Fenrir in day five. Uh, the bridge, for instance, costs 2,500 souls. And for instance, to buy the hideout tokens, which we'll also be discussing, that's another 7,500 if you're playing as the CEO, for example. So there is a heavy soul requirement to this as well. And so any additional you know, currency that you can scrounge up by selling you know, materials, things that you've picked up along the way that you don't need, definitely be selling that to the vendors that you will be finding as you explore and that is going to help you out as well okay so when we get to the day by day breakdown i do have to mention that um for this day five uh, day five Fenrir kill at least for me what i've noticed is that day one is like your most important day and then from there on it tapers down so your your foundation that you lay in day one and day two for instance uh basically paves the way for you for a successful run to day five uh, a lot of the times when i haven't been successful it's because of mistakes that i've made in day one and day two that ended up making me take a little bit longer and then not getting a day five but a day six or even worst case scenario a day seven now 
um, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to discuss during day one and that needs to happen during day one or at the very latest very early in day two but the bottom line with day one if i could summarize it as a word is explore now at any given time during my discussing day one to day five whenever i refer to explore please understand that what i mean by that is that you should at all times be out looking for the bridge to fenrir and the sorcerer on the beach uh the ashen beach which you need to be able to buy the hideout tokens from because we're not going to be doing the hideout we're skipping that entirely and so therefore we need to get those tokens elsewhere so that we can open the portal to Fenrir. At the same time as well, you're also exploring to find the land of pools because that's where our materials are going to come from for the weapons that we're going to use to kill Fenrir with. And then last, but definitely not least, the point is you're trying to find as many ramps as possible because you need to be bringing up a quarry by the end of day one or possibly very early day two. And at the same time, you need to be scrounging up a lot of wrought iron, cut stone, and uh the you know the raw materials that you need to construct the bridge to get to fenrir um the quarry is simply just going to eliminate a lot of the bad rng that you could get from not finding enough ramps or not scrounging up enough raw materials out in the wild as you're out exploring um i will say however if you are playing with the warden you're probably going to have an easier time and you might not even need to bring the quarry online just due to the fact that you have uh, better or less crafting requirements when it comes to building up the raw materials yourself but with the Sia, I've definitely found that every time that I was successful, it was when I had brought the quarry online. And obviously, the sooner the better. I think anything later than, you know, the morning of day two is already kind of like too late. Um, so getting back to day one, we're going to be exploring. We're going to be looking for as many ramps as possible. And as soon as we've scrounged up enough of those materials, we're going to be popping past the quarry and we're going to bring bringing the quarry, you know, online. So anytime during day one, if you're super lucky and right off the rip, you find like five six seven ramps in different areas where you're checking then you're golden you're good to go and you can go bring the quarry online as soon as possible at the same time as well and remember this is before even going back to the camp at, at all so you're using your uh, you know your secondary ability to farm trees and rocks and iron and things like that as you run past it and you're basically exploring you're finding camps you're finding ramps and you're kind of looking for the land of pools as well um during the course of this at some point you're going to have enough souls or let's say around about 600 to a thousand souls and your equipment is going to start wearing down especially the sword that you're carrying and this is the first time when you actually teleport back to base now you can either do that by finding one of the teleports out in the wild or just using your own teleportation stone and when you get into the base your order of upgrades here is you're going to be upgrading aaron and you're going to be upgrading steiner so you're going to get the materials guy up and you're going to get the blacksmith up each one level uh, you should have more than enough souls for that you're also going to be picking up the first pickaxe so because during the entire time here even though you have the quarry online you should still be religiously farming iron and stone whenever you run past it out in the wild and you're going to be doing a lot of running you're going to be doing a lot of exper uh, ex you know exploring so whenever you find that you need to be chopping that up as well because even with the quarry being online from day one that does not give you enough material to fulfill the requirements of the bridge so you are going to have to supplement it with some additional stuff that you find out in the wild unless you're chopping down something like 10 to 12 ramps which is possible i have seen that happen before then you're just going to be flush in materials and that's not going to be a problem and that's like a really good run where you sometimes see people actually getting like a day four for instance but that's a topic for another video um, last but not least, when you're out in the wild, before you go back for your first time in day one, you're probably going to be murdering some wolves, which is going to give you wolves teeth. And you'll be able to then also just get yourself the second uh, villager sword. So villager sword level two or whatever you want to call it. Now, um, that's of course, assuming that you started with the villager kit when you went into the game. And most people have access to that at, at this moment and don't really have the nowhere to hide or nothing to hide set which comes around at uh, i think it's 22 uh, battle pass level 22 or 21 or something like that so if you have the villager kit then this is a natural upgrade for you to get a villager sword too and it's just going to allow you to deal a little bit more damage especially when you go out into land of pools and you need to be farming for the materials for that now one last thing before you head out after being back the first time in day one is obviously pick up a quest as well you want to be getting a quest that's easy easy uh, is is the right one to pick and if you don't have anything to pick other than you know medium or hard obviously taking medium and you should also be preferring something that is like a material gather quest instead of you know like having to you know build something or you know 
uh, 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 provide some raw material like ramps or something like that so definitely pick those i unfortunately i can't tell you the names of all of them because there really are tons of them and then last but not least if you haven't found the the land of pools yet then obviously pick one that takes you to the land of pools because that's just going to be a natural waypoint for you to follow to get there heading into the night of day one you are not going to stay in the base and protect against the hell fiends you're still going to be out doing the exploration as we discussed before and heading into day two in fact the only night that you'll be returning back to protect against the hell fiends is the blood moon which is day four's night and all the other nights you will be staying out and you'll be continuing on looking for all of the items we've already mentioned before and basically carrying on playing outside the base the vendors are good enough to protect it and even though your tree will take a slight beating so to say you start out with enough souls 5k in it to basically survive with about let's say 800 to a thousand souls left by the time you finish everything in day five day five now during the course of day two you are going to now you have your pickaxe so you'll be running around you'll be uh, mining iron and stone as you see it running around and you'll also be concentrating on starting to pick your raw materials out of the place of pools or the land of pools rather what you're looking of course for is you're looking for uh, camps because you need mushroom moon bolts they come out of the chest of the camp so you gotta kill all the little goblins and then pick the chest and you'll also need to be killing some linorms because you need the linorm spikes so um they they can be quite tough especially if you go into the upper areas which is like a 210 gear requirement or something like that so obviously play it tight use the materials and and the traps and the things that you're getting from all the camps that you're also doing while you're exploring while you're looking for ruins and all of that they often give you traps that you can pop on the floor and it actually actually makes it a little bit easier as well definitely also farm two nodes of silver and then last but not least, if you come across a werewolf, murder it fucking immediately because you do need two werewolf fangs. So even if you have to beat it to death with your fist, get that done, but get those werewolf fangs as well. So that means that probably during halfway through the course of day two, maybe going a little bit closer during to the night, you're going to have enough materials to build at least the first level of the Nornia Axe or Nornia Axe 1. Or possibly if you're lucky and you ended up with some good uh items then you are or good drops rather you know good rng you could possibly have enough to build even the second level of axe so definitely do that during your second return back to the village as well remember you're not staying in the village at the night you defend it so you're literally just popping in to craft the items that you need and obviously you know upgrading the vendors a little bit as you need to do that as well now uh kind of in the butt end of day two the jotun will spawn as well but we're gonna not deal with him just yet and uh, we'll be basically addressing him in day three now during day three you're going to have quite a good layout of the land already due to all this lovely exploration that you've been doing and camp clearing that you've been doing and so on so you're going to use the opportunity to go out and basically drop the jotun down as close to death as possible so there's like one or two hits to kill it but not kill it completely just yet and then continue out exploring as well at the same time by now the event has spawned which is the stag which always spawns first sorry first so you should definitely go do that as well because you do need those event tokens as well to be able to um unlock the portal to fenra now just to emphasize again you should be doing camps as well because you should be killing some of the yellow bar you know minions because you also need the ancient uh, tokens from them which is also another currency that you need so don't be skipping the big camps you by now have at least the level one of the nornia axe and you're probably like level five level six in terms of character level so you can shred these minions and basically murder them out so absolutely be doing that for sure you should also now hopefully have a good idea of where either the ramp is uh the bridge rather ramp sounds terrible to fenra or at the very least the sorcerer that uh allows you to buy the hideout tokens hopefully by now you have one of these two in sight already and have found them on the map or possibly you found both however i have in certain runs by day three still not gotten this and managed to get this during day four so don't panic it's not the end of the world however maximize getting as many souls as possible and remember that when you do kill the jotun you're going to get a little bit of extra souls as well so you should be focusing on getting the seven and a half thousand souls together right now for the hideout tokens again if you're playing with the seer it's a little bit cheaper if you're playing with the warden uh quite a bit cheaper actually uh like 25 percent and um you you basically you should be factoring in the seven and a half for the hideout tokens and then factoring whatever you're getting from the jotun as covering the cost to basically repairing the bridge 
Now, day four is a kind of like a full one as well. Day four, the Jotun will have kind of been, you know, progressing a lot closer to your base. So you can quickly pop out, put the last nail in him and uh, basically get all of that materials and everything and the, the souls from him. What this also does is it makes that the next Jotun that spawns, spawns late enough in day five or yeah you know so beginning day five that it's not really a problem for you and you'll be long gone off the map before it even gets close to your base so you don't have to go out and kill it um secondly you now need to have definitely found the sorcerer on the ashen beach you will go spend your seven and a half thousand you'll pick up your your hideout tokens and then you'll go to the bridge and you'll basically construct a bridge because what you're going to want to do is you're going to be ready to go and rumble with Fenrir as soon as the blood moon finishes because the night of day four you need to be going back to the base and protecting your base your minions will not your vendors rather will not be able to uh, you know stand by themselves and you haven't spent anything on any towers or any gates so you definitely need to be doing that now that then brings us to completing by the night of, of of day four you've just finished the blood moon and day five starts right now at this moment in time you gather up all the materials that you need and you go and you build the bridge or if you've already managed to build the bridge during day four you go to the entrance of uh, the portal to Fenra. before you go into the portal to Fenra, a good idea to do is to drop all of your standard materials off at the chest in the uh, in the base now by standard materials i mean whatever you need to build po to to craft potions and all of that because that you can keep everything else you should obviously be selling to the vendors in any case to cover the cost for everything that we've mentioned to thus far once you're standing in front of the portal to to fender you're going to be popping in the tokens for the hideout that you've purchased you're going to be popping pop, uh, uh, popping in the, co the tokens for the quest that you've finished and lastly you'll be popping in the tokens for the event that you've also done which was of course the stag then you're going to go through the portal you're going to jump in there you're going to just fucking murder Fenrir because you're probably going to be like level 9 or level 10 in terms of character level and uh, hopefully you have a good combination of the ruins that we also discussed and last but not least if you have the Nornia axe too it's uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy and that is your day 5 kill of Fenrir done and dusted I've done this successfully a bunch of times now and uh, it really is super satisfying it's fun uh, i i know that out in the wilds there they exist day four and day th three clears even so day five seems to have become like uh, kind of like the median to hit i'm super interested in trying it with different characters as well so go ahead and let me know in the comments down below if you found this useful firstly uh, firstly but also which other characters you've tried it with and what you've seen success with i'd love to get some pointers from you guys but more importantly, I hope this was useful in some way, at least just in a way to sort of structure your mind and what you need to do to do this. Originally, when I started out doing this, even on stream, I struggled for hours to try and get it right. But, you know, there's a couple of things like, for instance, the building of the quarry, which I wasn't doing. And once I started getting my head around that and just sort of structuring my days out a little bit better, this became very easy. And I think to date, I've done six or seven of them successfully, which is not a whole lot, but it's quite a bit. But that's it for the video thank you so much for joining i really do appreciate it especially if you made it this far and uh, it's just really important to me that you have a fantastic morning great afternoon and super cool evening wherever you are in the world and until next video fucking cheers they want the best of me now best of me now best of me now best of me they want the best of me now best of me now best of me now best of me they want the best of me now